Hey, it's Chris, Legion Games. Let's talk 11, Football Manager. Now, this is going to be a little different. I'm going to do a little bit different style with this review, or this preview, or this impressions more than anything else. Give you five things that will hopefully be helpful for you to know about this game to help you with decision making on whether or not this game is going to be something you would like or it's something for you or not. My observations and my thoughts on it after having played through this prototype copy. Now, this is a very interesting game. If you have watched much of my channel whatsoever, you're going to start to recognize or immediately realize that this economic resource management strategy type game is not of my usual ilk, for better and for worse. But I am a big football fan. And it immediately grasped me from that side of things because of the dynamics, the scenario-based driven gameplay, as well as the league rankings and a management standpoint, not just from a lot of the other games are out there in terms of the football uh, type tabletop games where they focus on dexterity and the actual match dynamics themselves between players, but this is taking more of the bigger picture approach. And so right then and there, I mean, you just need to be aware of it from that side of things. I'll be frank with you. I opened up the rule book and I started reading through it and I said, oh, geez, what did I get myself into? But... But once you know what you're doing, it flows rather easily. Bigger picture wise, you are playing over the course of a week, if you will, where your decisions throughout the week are then used to manage and control the end result of the setup of the match that you are going up against a rival opponent. And obviously, the result of that match determines the league standings. And all of that has mechanisms in there to connect them from one to the other. Trying to simulate the course of progression at all levels. So what's the first thing that I think you need to know about this game? This game is potentially a very good solo puzzle. And I say that in a very positive manner if you're looking at it from that standpoint. I will also say, along the same lines, it has the ability to scale up, I believe, nicely on that side of things as well. Now let me expound on that. I only have a two-player copy of the prototype. It only came with two sets of player boards. So I can't speak to what the three or the four players truly would be. However, with the way the rules are set up, the actions that you are taking go very quickly, relatively speaking, because you're taking them one at a time going around, but then also the match phase of things is relatively simultaneous as well. So even at the higher player counts, there will not be as much downtime or lag time in that sense. Also, there is symmetry in what you can do in the sense that there is not as much, now there is some, there is not as much, I'm going to get this and you won't be able to get this aspect. I can get this character or this card that gives me this ability and you can't. We'll talk about that more in a minute though. But that is the main thing, depending on how much level of interaction you want or do not want on this game. That brings me essentially into point two. And that really is the big part of point two. This is not truly a multiplayer solitaire game, but it is also not very interactive at all either. Now, what do I mean by that? Again, those actions... You are going to be drawing from piles, essentially. You will have a transfer or an open field of cards available in front of you. From trainers to sponsors 
to players that you can hire also as professionals or youngsters. And the interesting way that they do this is that there are essentially for three of those four, five laid out. And if you're familiar with many of the other game systems where there is a progression where you start at one end and you go to the other, well, think of that only in this game, instead of paying more to go further down the line, you can only get one of the first three for whatever cost it already is. Those fourth and fifth ones are just unavailable to you until they cycle. Now, again, I know other games, Harry Potter, I'm looking at you, essentially, if you want to take something similar, that does not have a cycling mechanism that is addressed as a big fault in the game and can really hamper the game essentially significantly. At the end of every round, if I'm using the correct term there, the first card in the line is cycled out automatically, no matter what to help with keeping things as fresh as possible. So if there wasn't something you wanted and were available to get, there may very well quickly be. Many of the other actions on these cards allow you to cycle the whole line, for example, and hire anyone in the line as a way to mitigate that in addition. Now, again, that is the interaction though, is someone can potentially take the one that you're looking for in that lineup of three to five. But you're not really going to be playing head to head otherwise. It is otherwise, as the mechanism suggests, it is an optimization resource management puzzle. And can you do it better than the person sitting next to you against an AI that you can or cannot predict? And that leads me into point number three that you need to know. These opponent cards, if you will, give you, in front of you as a stack, a set of eight that you're going to be playing through as eight rounds, eight matches, until essentially the end of the game or the end of the scenario. And so you're seeing the one on the top, and it gives you sort of a hint of what to expect. It also tells you the formation that the other team is going to be playing. So you're going to match your formation, or try to match, or try to expose their formation depending on how you want to do that to set up your own players and then you flip it over to show you sort of the start of the shields and the soccer balls then you're matching up essentially and that is where i can see people either liking this or having some criticisms because you'll notice again eight different ones now and these are all division three there are Division 2. I'm assuming there are going to be Division 1s as well in the full game. I only have Division 3 for the most part here. And this is not something you can predict. This is not something you can mathematically figure out. This is not perfect information in terms of trying to mitigate it or deal with it. And so if you are looking for that style of resource management, Euro-esque game... This is also not going to be something maybe that you would enjoy because this is adding more of the random soccer element, the chaos that comes with the actual gameplay. As they say, everything is all well and good until the plan actually goes into action, until you actually play the game. I mean, as they say, that's why you play the game because weird things happen when you actually play the game no matter what sport or any sort of athletic competition that happens like this is sometimes flukes happen and that's what this is simulating and again you may not like that which leads me into sort of three and a half if you will maybe point four we'll call it maybe four a is that with these cards with some of the other aspects of it at the end of this match, for example, you roll a die and you get a penalty or a bonus just depending on what the die roll is and the result of your match. It sort of can be very frustrating from that side of things, especially if the die roll goes bad. It can be almost like pouring salt or lemon on the wound, if you will, because if you lose 
and you get a low die roll, you can really get penalized. Whereas if you win and you get a high die roll, you can really get a big bonus. Now, it's not big, but it's enough to, if that happens two or three times in eight rounds, that's easily the gap between potentially winning and losing with these victory points. And that's the other aspect that you're going to be doing is you're going to be rolling die for the other teams in the league randomly as win, lose, or draw, getting three, zero, or one point, depending on which it is. And they're going to be tracking that over also the eight rounds. And so if you're not maximizing yours, you could easily find yourself not very high in the standings just based off of random die rolls for these other AI teams that you're facing or not facing that round, essentially. And I can see people being frustrated with that. But also, it is relatively thematic in the sense that you can only control your team going up against the other team on any given game day. What the other teams are going to do around the league, you have absolutely no influence or no control over. And so the chaosness or the randomness from that side of things is what they're going for there. The last thing you need to know is there are scenarios. There's one scenario offered with this copy that I was able to play through. And the big question I got from it was, how much more is there going to be? Obviously, if you're going to have scenarios, there are going to be plenty, you know, a la the Robinson Crusoe, Portal's other big, massive side of things. So they know how to do scenarios. But is there going to be enough variability in the scenarios in terms of how you are getting set up? Because, I mean, they gave me very specific, okay, you get these three managers and you don't start with any players, and then here are a couple special objectives that you can do to get more victory points, and you can't get relegated, and if you get at least this many victory points, then you complete the scenario successfully. And obviously, you can tweak some of those very easily. But are they going to feel unique enough? And are there going to be enough differences between, say, the division cards that I showed you? Or are there going to be, again, more differences between uh, the trainers because there are quite a number in the prototype but at the same time I could see you easily after a game or two cycling through a lot of them and starting to develop okay well I need this one I am going to need this one I am looking for this one specifically because I know that this one is a little bit more powerful or a little bit more useful I mean the trainer that gave me two extra action points, blue resources, as a bonus action or as an additional action that I could take, a free action, if you will, not a bonus action, during my turn to allow me to be able to use or make sure I can use extra players during the game is something that, frankly speaking, I don't think I'd want to play any round of it again without. It was that powerful. It was that useful for me. And it's just that type of nuance and balance that I'm just wondering about. And now, in a solo game? Well, okay, great. That's that's part of that action, optimization, puzzle side of things, scenario-based, sure. But if that is at the two, three, or four-player count, and there's only one or two of those characters, trainers, is that a little unbalanced? And so I just want to see more from that side of things and see what else they can do with that. Because that is probably the biggest uh, maker to break it in a game like this, is having enough variety. And I'm not conflating variety with replayability here. Because I think you could very easily play this replayable with the randomness that I've mentioned for quite some time. But would it be enough because you will end up seeing a good number of those same things over and over again? Similarly with the sponsorships. A few of the sponsorships, the bonuses on the sponsorships were great, but the general sponsorships were very similar in terms of your reward. 
very akin to the stadium upgrades where I felt that those two aspects weren't quite as strong as the players, the upgrades, the trainer actions and bonuses from that side of things. And as sort of a final point here, with the limited play that I had, now again, at Division Three, I did not feel the need to be as OCD about setting up my field of players and actively making a lot of changes or lineup changes between games. And I guess, take that for what you will. Because part of me thinks, from a game standpoint... I should be having to manipulate that more. Otherwise, the game could be a little bit easy. At the same time, if you think of it thematically from a true football sense, the whole thing is that the majority of the time, in the majority of the matches, the team's lineups are very, very similar game to game to game to game. I mean, you have your best players playing every single time. And it's not like you're putting Ronaldo or Messi back on defense all of a sudden. You know, you're leaving your strengths where they're strong. You are not just flipping them around for the sake of doing so. And so from that side of things, I could see people either liking that as a thematic incorporation or, you know, like I said, okay, well, the last two or three matches of my scenario, I didn't really change my lineup whatsoever. I had upgraded. I had made them stronger. I moved maybe one across the other side to the other side, depending on the other team's formation, but that was about it. Which, again, made it easier to manage all of that stuff. It was one less thing for me to think about from that side of things so I could focus on the other pieces of my stadium and my sponsors and, you know, my my resources and my free actions, my trainers and the bonus points from matching those. So it just an interesting dynamic from that sense. So, there you go. My thoughts on 11, the football manager. I'm really going to be interested to see. Like I said at the beginning, this is not a game that I am used to playing, but it is an engine optimization puzzle. And it was more enjoyable as a person who does not like this style of game than I thought it would be when I first set it up and tried to just play around with it the very first time. I thought I was going to be, I thought it was going to be miserable, but it was surprisingly good. And I can see, like I said, especially at the one player count right now, just with what I have, if you got a dozen or 15 scenarios, I could see people really digging into this, especially if they had a football interest and emphasis as a true fanatic. The rest of is sort of icing on the cake then for them. But it'll be interesting to see, because I don't know what else the campaign is going to have in terms of the more in those other areas that I mentioned. But it's a unique, very interesting, but not, let me also be clear, it is not a game where I was struggling to decide or struggling to make decisions. It came very fluidly just like I would be as a professional football player dribbling the ball down the field. I did not feel that there was analysis paralysis issues. I did not feel that there was clunkiness in terms of different areas. But there is definitely mitigation that you are having to deal with based on some randomness that is a little bit out of your control at the beginning and the end of each round. And again... Some people may like that as a true thematic incorporation of a company dealing with human beings that are prone to error and prone to injury and everything else. And others may not like that because they're looking for more of a perfect information Euro style mechanism ish game. And that's not what this is trying to be. And that's okay. So there you go. Those are my thoughts. Hopefully that was helpful. If you have any questions, feel free to just shoot them below. I'll answer them the best of my ability. But as I said, this is a prototype. And so I don't know everything else that's going to be out there or up during the campaign. Um, 
but I'm happy to try my best either way. As always, thanks for putting up with me. Thanks for watching. Stay classy. Have a great day.